Monday writers, can you feel it? I can. Well, I've missed you, but I've been thinking about all of you ever such a lot. I read your work, I look closely at it, and I can see that you're getting better. You are becoming creative crafters. You are my brave spellers, and it is in those precise word choices we can see the colours the textures, the smells, the sights of words, and we build a whole world. Um, I'm really proud of you, and I'm, I'm proud of you just going for it. We've got deadlines, we've got time limits, and you're right there. And actually, let's be realistic, we've only got together as a big writing family another three lessons. 
no, I'm, I'm a little bit sad about that, but let's make these three lessons count. Let's make it worth it because it is in the learning. It is in the trying our very best. That's where we blossom. That's where we become better writers. Well, we're all here together in the writing classroom. My name is Mrs C and uh, together I will help you really improve your craft. Um, you know how it goes. We need to have fire coming out the end of our pencil or pen and it is just like this lickety split. It is pens up, think at pace, jot quick writings ace and we have seen some ace stuff actually and who do I want to celebrate? Well this is Jay, Jay's in year three and goes to St Frank's School in Manchester. I just, it this was stunning and um, I was singing along to your lyrics all weekend. In fact I was really getting on Mr C's nerves. I mean I have an amazing singing voice as you know uh, but yes he was uh, not enjoying it. Anyway let me read Jay's work. He saw sadness choking him. Please note sadness is spelt utterly perfectly. Uh, Winston's excited smile vanished as he looked at Dad, looking heartbrokenly at the odd leaf. Now, my stack is growing. It is building. It's enormous. And I'm sure yours is growing too. What I want to do now is celebrate uh, a few people on the stack. Here we go. We have Joshua in year four and opens with the lyric, remember me. See, told you I had a good singing voice. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua from St. Mary's Roman Catholic School. Great there. You're right up there. Big, bro bright and beautiful. And Logan in year three. Look at Logan's writing here from Grove C of E Primary. The dark, sinister fog choking the weak, hopeless son, hopeless. I'm glad you brought hopeless into the mix, Logan. Everybody notice that suffix less, less. It sort of hints at failure. Uh, we're going to have to lean on that learning later. And then Jess, um, I love this. I didn't ask you to do alliteration, but you just managed to gently drop it. I loved it. Looking longingly. I mean, your writing has improved inordinately. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud that I'm your teacher. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds of time. It's not long. You need to prepare your thinking side. I need in learning chunk one, three word bank spaces, two word bank spaces for two, and two for three. 30 seconds, off you go, get ready. Well done everybody, we're all raring to go. We've prepared our thinking side where we're going to gather and that is going to be our vocabulary vaults that we can push then into sentences. So we are working on a map. It is all about feast and it's about Winston, the dog's perspective on his owner's life. And last time we literally hit the skids. It was not going well. We were right down in minus nine negativity. But now we're going to reveal the next plot point. We are now on plot point seven. And actually, Winston can see a pathway through. I want you to notice before we watch plot point seven, actually, this the movement, Winston's journey through this story. It starts off low, 
and then he gets rescued from the street. And he's so delighted by the feast of food. Mm. And then somebody new moves in and it all goes a bit green and healthy. Oh, this is Steve, Mr. Plop on there. Right, let's start again. Down on his luck. Here, all the way up to getting rescued. When he gets rescued, he has delicious food. And in food, in fact, the food doesn't stop coming. We go up to plus nine. Mm. Food he's not so sure of. And yes, he gets angry about it. But don't worry, the food comes back. But then he realises Dad's not happy. This is our chance as a writer to lift the writing up to positivity. That's quite a big axis up there. It's a steep incline and we need the right words at the right time. OK, we are now going to watch plot point seven. And as you watch, I'm going to ask you to do something very particular. I want you to watch the short clip, but notice how Winston takes control. And more than that, also, what does he avoid? He is really determined and there are many distractions. What are the distractions? Off you go. Okay, what we're going to do today is concentrate on three lenses from the writing rainbow and we're going to dip in straight for a boomtastic, a technique. We've done it before, so I know we're going to be good at this. We're going to build a simile. Uh, the second thing we're going to focus on is actually sounds and we're going to create a lot of uh, um, emotion through sounds and we're going to use onomatopoeic words. And the third thing we're going to finish off, we never make it easy for ourselves, but we're going to conclude with a complex sentence. But I am your writing expert and together we are going to master the craft and get close as we can to the most precise words. Okay, here we go then. Are you ready? We're on the thinking side. I'm going to ask you to do something in particular. We're going to think about shades of intensity and I am thinking particularly about the part of the film when actually Winston launches out of the window and Dad is unable to stop him. He is powerless, he is unsure, he is Hesitant, he's uncertain, he does not know how to stop Winston. It's Winston's on a mission. So I've got the word unable here and I've written it on my thinking side, unable. But I need words in that family. I'm going to actually think about some thesaurus thinking now on my shadeometer. But what I'm going to ask you guys to do is very particular. Watch closely here. I'm going to write down a word that's in the fa family of meaning to do with unable. Dad was unable to stop him. I'm going to think of a word in that family but a little bit lower and I'm going to write down hesitant. Dad felt hesitant and then right at the top of this scale, higher up with intensity, I'm going to write down powerless. Dad was, or Dad felt powerless to stop him. But I'm gonna give you some clues. I want you now to chat with your friends and I want you to think of as many words as you can in between 
hesitant and powerless. But I'm going to give you some clues. Think about words that have the prefix un because they make ordinary words negative. Think about words that begin with the prefix in. They also make four negative words or a bit like powerless, putting less on the end indicates failure. But don't be tricked, children. Any words can appear in that family. I'm going to give you 45 seconds. Off you go. Okay, come on teachers, I know it's Monday. It's not your favourite day, but I need you stood, smiling, ready. They are going to be kind. They are not doing hands up and we are getting the ideas down now. Off you go. Oh, well done, everybody. Did you audit and add? If you've got it, then you tick it off. I had helpless. Did you have helpless? Great, if you did, tick it off. If not, add it. I had uncertain. Did you have uncertain? If not, tick it or add it on. Okay, we're moving into simile now, learning chunk two. And this is where we make a comparison to something that is similar. We're thinking about the dashing through the window. What I'm thinking about is other things that are dash, other things that are quick, other things that move at speed. I'm thinking about the world and what does move at speed? What objects move at speed? What transport moves at speed? What animals move at speed? Or, I'm actually not just going to think about the comparison of what moves at speed. I'm also going to think about how they move. And I'm going to do those two things together. I'm going to think of a cheetah. Mm. And then I'm going to think of a how they move action verb. I'm going to do those together in the past tense. I'm going to write down cheetah and then I'm going to write down leapt. How they move and the comparison. Mm. What about a missile? Yes, that's a good idea, Mrs C. Missile. 
Let's write down missile and I'm going to think about how it moves in the past tense, a verb. Launched. Mm, launched. They're my two ideas. I want you now to chart, but you have a double job to do. You've got to think about something fast, an object, a thing, an animal, any comparison. But make sure you add in a verb in the past tense. Off you go. Hello. So here we go then. Are you ready? We are going to go straight into a kind calling out and I know you have creative ideas. I can't wait to see them. Come on teachers, gather their stuff. Off you go. Okay, brilliant. I am now moving to the third area and I'm thinking about actually language that will help me add extra information to my simile. Similes sometimes are less effective if they don't add more detail. The detail is the richness. This is how we get reader connection. So I'm gonna think about my first idea the cheetah and where the cheetah would be moving and that extra detail. It is almost what I call finish the job, you know, add it on to finish the sentence. So the cheetah is leaping and, and moving and tearing through the savannah. I'm going to write that down, through the savannah. The savannah is a place, so I'm going to use a capital letter as it's a proper noun. The missile is launched and I'm going to place it in the environment. Um, it is moving. I keep saying moving. I want to make that more precise. Raging. Raging through the night sky. Oh Mrs C, well done for a Monday. What I want you to do now is choose one or two of your favourite comparisons. And then as you look at it, think, hmm, I want to add more detailed description and place it moving in an environment. Off you go.
Okay, teachers, now when we do kind calling out, we need to hear their comparison. So they might say missile and then their extra description. Off you go, teachers. Okay, we're going to do something tricky now. We're going to build a simile with extra description. And I want you to watch closely at how it's built. Okay, teachers, you're in unison with me. You are writing alongside me. Children, you're going to see the writer's brain. You're going to see me reject things, change things, switch things up. Okay. I'm going to write this sentence about dad now, feeling hesitant, uncertain, as Winston launches. Uh, dad, here we go, let me, dad was unsure, it's okay, dad was powerless, I prefer that, dad was powerless um, to stop him, remember, um, Depending on the synonym you choose, you might have to think about the words around it. Don't be afraid to change things. Um, Dad was powerless to stop him as he... Now, I've got to be really careful here. I'm going to make my simile compare Winston's movement to a bullet. A bullet leaving a gun. And so here... I'm going to choose my verb wisely because I know I'm going to make a comparison with a gun. I'm going to write shot. <laughs> yes, I like that. Um, Dad was powerless to stop him as he shot through the open window. Yes, that's good. Um, like, this is now me lining up the simile, like a silver bullet. Mm. I love the way I've got shot and bullet, you know, talking to each other. Mm. I do want to say something though here about colours. Colours are okay now and again in writing, but when you're about to use a colour, think very closely is it bringing an extra dimension to the writing? Many bullets are silver. You know, not all, but it's just, is it worth it? And I'm feeling here, it isn't worth it. Colours sometimes are worth it. That's the tricky thing with writing, that you are the writing master. And here, well, as I am the master, mm, silver is getting rejected. I'm going to change that to just actually show how fast it is because that feels more relevant. High velocity, yes. Um, Dad was powerless to stop him as he shot through the open window like a high velocity bullet from the barrel of a gun. Okay. 
That's my simile with extra description. I send you off now. I give you three minutes. Excellent. Plot point seven is moving, it is dashing, there is pace. Winston is on a mission. We need around us as writers verbs, verbs that we can push all this movement through our writing. So I want to get ready for all these verbs now on learning chunk two in word bank one. So I'm thinking of these action words in all their forms. I want them ending in ing and I want them um, sometimes ending in ed, but don't be tricked. Some past tense verbs are irregular and don't end with ed. But think about both of those endings. I'm going to start with pelt and I'm going to turn that into a pelting and pelted. Winston was pelting. Winston pelted. I'm going to think of this word, dodging. Oh, you've got to be careful of those two letters. You might get them the wrong way round. Winston dodged. You know, here's a dog. I might have switched the D and the G. I need you now to do a chart. I challenge you to create four verbs in different forms. Off you go.
Okay, folks, think of that action-packed movie, not just the window escape, but across the street, through the kitchen. We need loads of action verbs. Come on, teachers. Kind calling out, no hands up. Let's get as many as we can. Well done, everybody. Great. Now we're in the kitchen. He's avoiding all the food, the steaks, the wonderful food, all that food crashing around him. But he is pushing on through the kitchen. He is bashing through the pots and pans. And I want you to listen and watch now because as you listen and watch, we're going to try and gather onomatopoeic words for the crash, bang, wallop. Okay, well, I've got an unusual one, actually. I'm going to write my idea down. Here it is, chimed. <laughs> and as I was listening, I've also got pinged. I know you'll have lots of pots and pan onomatopoeic words. Off you go. You are chotting. Okay, have you got a clinked? Because I thought of that while you were chotting. Right, teachers, up you get, kind calling out, gather the ideas.
Oh, well done. Crashed, bashed. Have you got these? Clattered, jangled, clanged. Mm. Okay, we are moving to writing side. We're going to build the movement in. We're going to build the noisy kitchen. And I want the teachers now to write down a provided sentence. Um, children, you can write it down when you're ready, but this is a sentence I'm going to give you on a plate. <laughs> See what I did there, a feast pun. Um, I'm going to read it for you. The thought hit him like Cupid's arrow. He looked at the green leaf and knew what he had to do. Those two sentences, you can have them. Your teacher is writing them down now. But what we are going to do just here, we are going to build the onomatopoeic words into our writing and the movement. I'm looking at some of these movement words like pelting and dodging and weaving and sprinting. But I also like these sort of words that I could turn into in words. I'm going to take clattered and start with it. Clattering. Mm. Clattering through the door to the kitchen. Mm, well done, Mrs C. Now, that clause can't stand on its own just like that. I'm just going to put a comma there, that lovely subordinating clause. And then I'm going to introduce Winston here using the pronoun he. I don't want to keep using the word Winston. We know we mean Winston. He, and then I'm going to choose some of these words. He pelted and dodged. He sprinted and weaved. Mm. He weaved and dodged. He dodged and weaved. Oh, I could write it twice, couldn't I? He weaved and dodged. And then I could have as something else was happening as the pots and pans were, you know, being really noisy. I could have as, while, whilst. Mm, I'm going to have as, as. Mm, I've changed my mind. While, while pots and pans. Oh, I've got loads of ideas here. As pots and pans clinked and clanged. As pots and pans chimed and clinked. As po while pots and pans, oh, I'm just going to rewrite that while. It looks like I've misspelt it. While pots and pans crashed and bashed around him. Oh, I'm going to reread that back. Clattering through the door to the kitchen. He weaved and dodged while pots and pans crashed and bashed around him. Can you notice there how I'm always using words in pairs? That's clever, isn't it? It creates a lot of rhythm. Off you go, writers. I'm going to give you longer because of the provided sentence. It's not too long, mind. Four minutes.
I cannot wait to read your work. You really do make my heart zing, you know. I, I burst with excitement when your teacher shows me the favourite offerings of the day. Um, we are now moving to Learning Chunk 3, Word Bank 1, and we're not going to give up on the movement, on the action-packed stuff. We're going to work to build a complex sentence. You've already had a go at this without even realising, but we are going to begin now with another word beginning with ing. And we're thinking about the outside seating of the cafe. We are taking Winston there on the other side of the kitchen. And I'm thinking of this sort of clause that could get it going, a subordinating clause. Um, I want to remember my movement words. Bounding. Bounding through the restaurant. Oh, well done, Mrs. C. That's a good start. I've got another idea here. Um, bursting onto the street. Bursting onto the street cafe. Mm. This means that I'm building a sentence that is going to ultimately be a complex sentence. I want you now to think of a clause. Start with that movement verb and take Winston right outside. Off you go. Okay, is your teacher smiling? Check. Has your teacher got a pen in their hand? Check. Right, let's do some kind calling out and gather the ideas. In the film, it is the action-packed part. There is physical energy, but we need to have the power of words to actually inject the energy into the writing. And once again here, we're collecting verbs, action verbs. I need them ending in ing. This is where Winston's trying to find her, dad's friend more than a friend maybe. Um, the verbs I'm thinking of is searching, seeking, 
They're my two ideas. I want you to chop now. Off you go. Okay, I need you now to do kind calling out. I want you to audit, I want you to add. I need more verbs. I need all this energy coming through in our writing. Off you go. Okay, everybody, what we're going to do now is think about what Winston is hunting for, searching for, looking for. And it's something in particular. It's his perspective. It's clues that she is nearby. I'm going to think about a dog on the hunt and the sights he's looking for. He's looking for her, maybe her shoes, her skirt. Mm. Her legs, her glasses, her silhouette. Now I'm worried about spelling silhouette, but I'm going to be brave. It's a tricky one. Silhouette. Mm. Never sure about the O and the U, but I'm going to brave it and check it later. Then I'm going to think about actually sounds. Sounds, I'm going to think about what he could be tuning into as a dog. His senses are heightened. He could be listening out for her voice. He could be listening out for her chattering. And then what about smells? Her familiar perfume? I'm going to write that down. Mm. I'm going to go straight in now to a writing side because... I think you can do sights and smells and sounds very easily. But watch how I build this complex sentence. Bursting onto the street cafe. Winston, and I've got a choice here as a writer, I can do sights, I can do sounds, I could do smells. I'm going to do smell, I think. Winston could smell the aroma, the perfume, the scent, the fragrance. Oh, actually, fragrance is so positive. It almost now feels like he's making amends with her. I'm going to have fragrance. He could smell the fragrance. Mm, be brave, Mrs. C. Fragrance. Oh, gr 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 
That's why you always have to sound out when you smell, could smell the fragrance he was seeking. He was searching. I'm going to have searching, but I feel like I need something else on the end. He was seeking, could be he was seeking full stop. He was searching for, he needs something more. I want you now to build a complex sentence that includes sights, smells or sounds. Off you go. Wow, look at that writing in unison. You might be in Belgium, you might be in Australia, you might be in Stockport, but you are most welcome. Your writing is sharper and you are revealing precision in your choices. I'm going to read my work back. I'm going to ask the teachers to get ready because at the end of this, I'm also going to hand over another provided sentence that I need the teachers to jot down so that our work glues cohesively together. As I read mine back, I want you to have a following finger. I want you to look at your work and just see how it is the same, how it is different. Dad was powerless to stop him as he shot through the open window like a high velocity bullet from the barrel of a gun. The thought hit him like Cupid's arrow. He looked at the green leaf and knew what he had to do. Clattering through the door to the kitchen, he weaved and dodged while pots and pans crashed and bashed around him. 
bursting onto the street cafe, Winston could smell the... No, I changed that, didn't I? I improved it. He could smell the fragrance he was searching for. And now teachers jot this down, lickety split, you know, pens up and all of that. He ran up to the familiar shoes and dropped the peculiar leaf in front of them expectantly. Now, here is the best bit for Mrs C. You're going to send me your work. You are my writing apprentices and your talent is beginning to shine through. Send your work in, teachers, your three favourites for the day. And when I say favourites, I mean those children who have put that heart-burst effort and are really trying to make progress. You can feel their effort and I can feel their effort too. Get your work into me. You know the hashtag, hashtag Mrs C. I will read it and then you might see your name up in lights tomorrow. Go forth and enjoy the rest of your day and I can't wait to read your work.